Becoming a full-time RVer can be an amazing life change, but it can also be a stressful one, especially if you're unsure of exactly what you're getting into. There are plenty of questions we wish we'd asked ourselves before we hit the road and did a complete 180. So after almost six years on the road and lots of lessons learned the hard way, we're revisiting one of our most popular topics. And sharing some of the most popular questions to ask yourself before diving into the adventurous world of full-time RVing. Let's just dive right in with a big first question. Are you comfortable with downsizing your life and letting go of stuff? You may think you're comfortable with the idea until you have to start letting go of books, furniture, or that sentimental vase Aunt Patty gave you on your wedding day. Or is it vase? <laughs> <laughs> Aunt Patty doesn't care. It may be through that downsizing you realize you've attached a lot of sentimental value to items in your home and that can start to get real overwhelming real quick. If you find yourself in that position, that's okay. You can still do this. Storage units are a great option for splitting the difference. Now, that said, storage units can be pricey and we should know we've had several of them. And if that isn't in your budget, consider asking a friend or family member to let you use a corner of their basement or an unused closet, which we have also done. It may sound obvious, but you need to be cool with going from a home full of stuff to an RV with very limited space. All RVs come with a max cargo carrying capacity. This capacity tells you just how much weight you can carry in your RV safely. We have a video on seven things to consider when buying an RV, and in it we talk in more depth about cargo carrying capacity. We'll link to it in the description. Are you someone that needs familiarity and routine that rarely changes? Yes, you can absolutely build routine into your life as a full-time RVer. But the view outside your front door is going to change regularly and you will need to find your way around new towns, around new grocery stores, campgrounds, highways, and more. If you like knowing where everything is at the grocery store or having your neighborhood barista know your exact morning coffee order, you may find RV life stressful. Try taking a few RV trips where you have to navigate the unfamiliar as it pertains to day-to-day -day life. Go grocery shopping, look for community events, test out finding the best local eats, grab some coffee. See how the unfamiliar makes you feel. You may find you hate it, or you may find that you relish it more than you thought possible. Do you have a job that will travel with you? Unless you're retired, a recent lottery winner, I think the Mega Millions is over a billion dollars right now, uh, or you're just really, really good with your investments, you're probably going to need work. If you can work remotely, really consider what that will look like on the road. Do you need dedicated workspace, constant connectivity, or maybe you want a new travel-friendly job? We've got a link as well in the description to a video of 30 possible travel friendly jobs that might work for you. We'll also link to an article from Flex Jobs that lists 30 companies that hire for true work from everywhere positions. They say that only about 5% of remote work is truly work from anywhere. Lots of companies require you to work in certain states or have a hardwired internet connection that's not truly location independent. And we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't address the income generating plan that many new RVers embark on content creation. Among a host of other things, we are content creators, but we have to tell you that making a living off your blog, podcast, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, what have you, is not something that happens overnight for the majority of us. While we built RV Miles, we each worked two full-time jobs basically from the road to make ends meet. And while you may be watching this on YouTube or Facebook and clicking the link in the description to support today's sponsor, it took us years to get to this point. Dream big, but have a plan that gets you there. And speaking of valuable video sponsors who help make our business possible and believe in our brand, we'd like to thank RVMattress.com by Brooklyn Bedding for their support and allowing us to keep this content free to you. Abby and I have been testing out their Wanderlust mattress for over five months now, and we couldn't be happier. We are sleeping better, and we were able to customize the mattress to fit our exact needs. RVMattress.com offers a 120-night sleep trial, the ability to pick different sizes and thicknesses depending on your personal sleep needs, 
Plus, their products are toxin-free, made in the USA, and incredibly simple to set up. We were able to have ours delivered to the campground, and within hours of unboxing the mattress, it was fully expanded and ready for us to sleep on. RVmattress.com offers free shipping and is currently extending 20% off to the RV Miles community when you visit RVmattress.com slash RVmiles and use promo code RVmiles, all one word. That's RVmattress.com slash RVmiles with promo code RVmiles for 20% off. Now, back to the show. Are you doing this because you want to save money? RVing can absolutely be an affordable way to cut down on expenses when you're traveling. But if you're going into full-time RVing and thinking you're going to save all sorts of cash, chances are you won't. You will have repairs, you will have unknown expenses come up, and perhaps you took out a loan for the RV or the truck you need to pull the RV safely. Campground prices, while still mostly affordable at the state and federal level, continue to rise. Private campgrounds can cost up to $100 a night right now in some areas. If you have a goal of seeing all the top places in this country, you're going to pay top price to do so. Take some time to put together a budget based on how you envision yourself traveling. Are you moving weekly, doing monthly rentals, which are much more affordable, or spending lots of time taking in the local sites? And then price it all out. Does what you envision fit your actual budget. How much money you save will depend on your goal and what kind of RVer you want to be. So have a realistic view of how you would like to live and what that will cost you monthly before you start your journey. Is everyone in your immediate family on board with going full time? If you are not on the same page with your immediate family members, this is not going to work. You and your partner need to be 100% all in or this will fail and your relationship will falter. Your kids need to be all in or everyone will be miserable. For us, this was truly a family decision. Have those talks and realize that if a family member has real reasons why this isn't for them, you will need to address those, or maybe this just isn't the right time for everyone. It's important to note that we're only talking about immediate family members here. What Aunt Patty or Cousin Jeff has to say about your choice is noise that you can decide to listen to or ignore at your own discretion. You can calm the grandparents' concerns, however, by sharing well thought out details and get them excited about the adventure. Invite them to meet you on the road. If after all that, family members continue to be unsupportive, then you have to decide whether or not their support is critical to the success of your family and your choices. What is it about RV life you find so attractive? So only you can answer this question. So take some time and make sure that what you find appealing about RV life isn't just that funny TikTok of RVers hanging out or a cool YouTube video at a national park, because while those can be a part of your RV experience, they will not be your only RV experience. For every gorgeous Instagram photo, there are 40 really, really messy ones that didn't make the cut. And at our house, it's usually 45 really, really <laughs> messy ones. <laughs> and this question really naturally leads into the next one. What is it about your current situation that you're unhappy with? What is it that is drawing you away from stationary life to a more nomadic one? Once you answer that, do you believe RVing is going to solve your dissatisfaction? Remember, RVing is going to come with its own set of stressors. So make sure you don't fall prey to the grass is always greener scenario. RV life is surprisingly a lot more like stationary life than you might think. You can't run away from your problems and RVs won't fix your marriage or solve your mental health concerns. No, they definitely won't. They might improve them over time, but in the beginning, you're gonna need to address those. Are you comfortable with maintenance and general repairs? Because you will have to do them. Your home is a moving earthquake and things will break. Your RV will need to be regularly maintained and all those tasks will fall to you. We've had big repair jobs, little repair jobs, and everything in between, and we've had to learn as we go. Having a mobile tech come to your campground is a possibility. It can be a blessing or a real pain, especially if you're in an area where mobile techs are few and far between, but you need to know how to do this yourself so that you can solve the problems and don't have to rely on other people. Having to take your rig in for service means you are moving out of your home and you might find yourself in a hotel for days or possibly weeks. We have absolutely been there. Yes. There are a lot of great resources out there to help you become your own RV handy person and we'll link to a few we recommend in the description. If you have kids, are you comfortable with the ideas of homeschooling and being your child's teacher? 
Now, whether you call it homeschooling, road schooling, online schooling, unschooling, or just life, you will be embarking on a new educational adventure with your kids once you start RVing. How do you feel about that? How do your kids feel about that? Prior to our family getting on the road, we were already homeschooling in Chicago, so we had a good idea of what worked for our kids and what didn't. But even with two years of homeschooling under our belts, the transition to road schooling was a big one for our family. If you don't want to go it alone, though, there are plenty of excellent online school options available. And remember to check your state laws, too, as each state handles homeschooling differently. Just remember, there is no one way to do this, and you are free to figure out what works best for you and your family and don't worry about everyone else. Do you have a health condition that would be difficult to manage on the road? This last one is incredibly important. If you, your partner, or your kids have a health condition that requires frequent visits to a medical provider. If that is the case, then this may not be the best time to go full-time RVing. Seek the advice of your doctor if you're unsure if this lifestyle will work for you. And trust us when we say a medical emergency on the road can be a nightmare. That said, you don't have to travel all around the country. You can be a full-time RVer within your home region, as long as the weather is something that you can deal with year-round. If after answering the above questions and having those truthful talks, and you still feel that full-time RVing is right for you, go for it. There's a reason we have stayed on the road for as long as we have. A life of travel can be truly rewarding and you'll appreciate it and enjoy it even more if you're fully ready for it. If you have a question about the topics covered or another aspect of full-time RVing, leave us a comment and we'll do our very best to answer. And as always, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for weekly news updates and RV life videos. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the road.